Hi, in this video we will finish building our power supply, well at least finish building the circuit. If you haven't watched the first part yet, I'd recommend you checking that one out first. I will leave a video link in the description below. So just to quickly remind you what we're doing here, my goal is to use three of these 12 volts, 2.5 amp switching power supply bricks to form the input to a linear regulator. What I wanted to do is use a relay switching scheme to parallel two of these together in the lower range of the output and put two or three of these in series when the output voltages are higher. And the reason we needed to switch the input voltage is to limit the power dissipation in the linear regulator. And of course, the reason I chose to use the linear regulator as the output is for the excellent power supply ripple rejection performance linear regulators typically have. And as you can see here on the workbench, I have already built the circuit out somewhat crudely using protoboards. But let me walk you through the final circuit's design again, so that you know exactly what you are looking at here. And here is the relay switching circuit portion. And as you can see, it is more or less the same as the one I showed you last time, except with very few differences here. And on the input side, you can see that I added this reverse protection diode. These diodes are to prevent the power supply rails from being reversely biased. And also I added in these uh, current sharing resistors here, 50 milliohm each. And uh, technically speaking, only the lower two are necessary as these are to be uh, paralleled. But I just also added one here to uh, make it uh, symmetric here. And uh, of course, uh, we already know how this operates. This uh, K1 is a double pole double through relay. And at its current state, you can see uh, these lower two rails are parallel together. And uh, when we switch this relay on, uh, you will see that these two rails become uh, in series. And also, once the K2 switches to the other position, the third power rail is being added to the bottom two. And to drive these relays, I'm using the circuit that you can see here. The, these are essentially two comparators and one for driving each relay. And the one thing notice is that uh, the voltage threshold is set by these two potentiometers. Now you can see I put a small capacitor at the bottom half of each of the potentiometer. And this is to increase the time constant so that when we're doing the relay switching, there's a momentary uh, disconnect between the output and input because relays are break before make switches. In that case, we don't want the circuit to switch on and off erroneously. So therefore, that's why we have those capacitors here. And the last piece of circuitry I want to show you here is this uh, linear regulator output portion. And here we have an LM338, and the circuit here is really standard. The only thing you may want to change are these R1 and R2. And based on the value here I have, 330 ohm for R1 and 10k potentiometer for R2, you roughly get the range of uh, output between 1.25 to 35 volts. Now let's take a look at the setup here on the bench. This board to the right is where the comparator is located and also is driving the relays here. Now, I have three relays on this board instead of the two I used in the circuit diagram that I showed you earlier. The reason is because I don't have a double pole double throw relay. So I'm using two a single pole double throw relays to uh, make up for a double pole double throw relay. And that board is the messiest because it's so small and uh, you know these LM393 comparators are a little bit hard to work with, especially it requires a pull up resistor on the output. So that increases the resistor count and also given the small footprint and you really don't have a lot of areas to uh, work with on these proto boards. But anyway, so that's the uh, the board itself. Also, we have all the wires coming in from the uh, power supply, so that doesn't help the situation either. And that's why it's uh, re relatively messy there. And on this side, this board is the linear regulator board with the LM338 mounted underneath on top of that the large heatsink. 
And you can probably tell by the layout of this board that uh, this side is the input and here is the output. And nothing wire is the voltage measurement wire that goes into the comparator board. So now that you know what is what on this uh, bench, I'm going to turn everything on and we can take a look at how this circuit behaves. So the multimeter here is to measure the input voltage into this linear regulator. So we can observe the relay switch in here. Okay, I just turned on the power bricks and also rearranged the desktop here a little bit so that you can see this multimeter a little clearer. And just to remind you that this multimeter is monitoring the input into this linear regulator. And what you see here on the electronic load is the voltage that is currently being outputted from this linear regulator. So now let me start ramping up the output voltage and we'll see on this meter at what point we start seeing the jump. Of course, you should also pay attention to the DC electronic loads output so that you can see what the current output voltage is. So let's gradually increase. And at right around 9.5 volts, you heard the first click and the, the input switched from being in parallel to now being in series. And of course, you see the 24.68 volts. So let's keep increasing. Again, at roughly around the 20.5 volts, we saw that the input switched again. So now we have three power bricks in series at 37 volts. So everything worked exactly as planned. Of course, now if we keep increasing it, we should be able to hit our maximum around the 35 volts. So, so far, so good. And uh, let's quickly wrap it down and you should see the input started dropping to 24, 12, and yep. So everything works exactly as planned. And uh, the next thing I want to show you is what's the maximum current you can draw when the output is under 10 volts. As you recall that we paralleled two of the power bricks together, so we should be able to output around at least 5 amps. So let's take a look. So now let's say we set the voltage to uh, 5 volts, which is uh, a typical voltage that you might be working on. And uh, let's uh, increase the output current to see if we have any issues. Now uh, you see that this voltage reading started dropping, but that's really just because we have this long wire and uh, the voltage at the terminal should be pretty steady. So right now, you can see that we have no problem drawing 5 amps. And just uh, to take a, another measurement, let's take a look at what is the voltage at the terminal here. So you can see we're at a 5.09, so it's almost exactly the same as what we had when there's no load. So let's uh, ramp the load down and we'll see that. And you can see we almost uh, did not have any voltage drop at all. So very good. So now we know we can output 5 amps in the lower voltage range. Let's uh, ramp up the voltage and uh, take some other tests there. So let's uh, ramp it up to say 12 volts. And that's another typical voltage that you might be operating under. So let's uh, ramp up the, volt, the amperage here. And you can see that uh, we reached the 3 amps with no problems. In fact, uh, as we mentioned in the previous video, this power supply actually can output uh, around 3.5 amps with no problem. So as you can see here, no problem whatsoever. And uh, now let's uh, ramp up the output voltage even higher and uh, see the upper range, how it behaves. So let me turn off the load. And uh, let's uh, first reduce it. Let me, uh, let's say we do uh, 30 volts here. Okay. And uh, let's enable the load. Let's uh, ramp up the current again. 
And again, we should be able to uh, output 2.5 amps with no problem. And again, you can see here, we're already outputting 2.6. Let's ramp it up all the way to 3.5. No problem whatsoever. And one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, our design has a little flaw here, and uh, that is our output uh, voltage is uh, being sampled as the comparator's input. So in normal conditions, when there's no load or the load is very uh, small, that is not a problem because we have uh, these uh, capacitors here to increase our time constants of the comparator. But if the load is, uh, say, very high, and that time constants might not be able to compensate that. And during the relay switching, because relays are devices of uh, break before make, there is a very minute uh, time period where the input into the linear power supply is lost. And that would cause a huge uh, voltage differential and it would cause your relay to switch on and off, on and off. Uh, there's a lot of a chattering. So an obvious uh, solution is to basically either make sure that you, your load does not draw too much current when you are switching your output voltage or simply just disconnect the load and then switch and then change your voltage to your desired output level and then hook your load back on. Uh, which is always a good idea not to uh, change your voltage on the fly with the load connected anyway. Of course, you can easily design around this limitation by simply sampling on a rail that is always has power, but uh, you will have to add a little bit more circuitry to achieve that. So that's all I wanted to show you for today's video. And maybe later I will find a case and put all these components in and make it look nicer. But at least now you get some idea of how to turn these power bricks into a lab power supply. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. I will catch up with you next time.